like the sunshine. The, the, the solar system has nothing on you. It said that we, in our solar plexus, that we, we hold the power of a thousand suns, and we have thousands of suns lit up in here today. So we are glad you're here. We're going to start out with uh, a Ricky Byers song that is near and dear to my heart. And we, we've not done the beginning part before now. And so I'm excited to get to share this with you. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand but now I can say if you are all discouraged, struggling just to face another day, you got to let it all go. Just let it all go. And this is what you've got to say I really and the recalcitrants. <laughs> I'm sorry to call you DV and the recalcitrants. <laughs> but welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning here at Jubilee Circle. We're so happy to have you here, and we are continuing our Via Positiva theme of loving what is, because A Course in Miracles tells us to look at the crucifixion but not to dwell on it. And that just means that we have to clearly see the world for what it is and love this place no matter what we think the circumstances are. So then we can become open enough to love the world and be that light that it needs to awaken ourselves and everyone else. 
And so if you need a bulletin and you're watching on uh, the YouTube, you can uh, either look down in the description or go to jubileecircle.com and you will find a bulletin online. You'll have the readings and the lyrics and everything you need. And here in the room, everybody's got their own copy. That's a good thing. All right. If you have ever tried to meditate, how many of you try? How many of you succeed? Oh, well, we've got a couple of you. All right. <laughs> you go. Yeah. But if you ever, when you start, right? You've most likely encountered what is known as the monkey mind. <laughs> you know, as soon as you try to sit quietly, you feel just overwhelmed by your thoughts. You're trying to ohm your way to peace, and suddenly all you can think about is what you're going to do when you're done with this. Uh, <laughs> you start to think about whatever happened to that old high school buddy, and what the world was that noise? Yep. Everything. You're everywhere. The one thing you cannot seem to do is quiet that cacophony that is in your head. But here's the good news. When that happens, it means you're doing it right. <coughs> because all those things are going to happen when you try to meditate. But often we give up because we think we're supposed to have no thoughts while we're meditating. But the trick is not to end our thinking, but to develop our awareness to the point where we can become the director of our thoughts instead of feeling helpless in the onslaught. The key is to maintain what the Buddhists call the one seat. And that's a fancy name for teaching ourselves how to remain present, even as thoughts of the past or the future or even fantasy thoughts just run through our minds. The average person, according to a 2005 study, how many thoughts do you think per day, on average, you have running through your head? How many? 5,000? 5, 10 billion. 2 billion? <laughs> OK, it's somewhere between there. <laughs> It is actually between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day wow. on average. No wonder we're overwhelmed. But Agape Licensed Spiritual Director, pra Spiritual Practitioner, Deb Varn, is going to give us a method this morning to kind of tame the monkey mind and find the way to take that one seat, to remain present, even as those thoughts come flooding in. Because when you can make up your mind to take back your mind, the only thought you'll have then is, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Please rise as you're able. And we begin as we do every more every morning here at Jubilee Circle. We remember the four elements. We remember the air and the water and the earth and the fire. And we burn sage as a reminder that this is a safe and a sacred time. And we set our intentions, our intention for ourselves personally to be that light and love in the world, and our intention that the world be open to that light and love. And we call the four directions to orient ourselves in this sacred time and space. And so I would invite you to turn and face the east, but most of you are already there. So here we go. Open us, Holy One. Let our love flow like the rays of the sun as it rises each day. Open our hearts to those around us and let your love flow. Open our minds so that we may understand the world around us and let your love flow through us. Open our mouths so that we may speak new words, sing new songs, and have new vibrant and holy conversations, flowing with wonderful words of life and love. We're to turn to the right, we face the south. Heal us, Holy One. Heal anything within us that stops us from uniting in one love for this world. Heal our anger, heal our despair, heal our helplessness and our hopelessness. Open us to your healing touch and help us to grow into the holy channels of love that you would have us be. Order turn to the right, we face the west. Touch us, Holy One. Touch us with your love so that we may know what that true holy love feels like. Give us the wisdom we need to discern between the selfish and needy love of the world and your love, a love that gives and gives out of its never-ending abundance. Touch us, Holy One, with your love. Order turn to the right, we face the north. Bless us, Holy One. Bless us so that we may be a blessing. Bless us with open hearts and open minds and open eyes. Bless us so that we may understand that the most tender blade of grass is a blessing to us, just as the most tender touch of a loved one's hand is a blessing. Help us to recognize the blessings in, through, and around us at all times. And as we turn back toward the center, it's easy to feel like we're all separate in this world. Just pass that around so everybody gets some. It's easy to feel like we're all separate because we have all these individual bodies. But I invite you this morning, look beyond your own individual existence and begin to see yourself in others, even in those, and maybe especially in those who irritate you, 
those who frustrate you or make you angry. Those people are the ones who have lessons to teach you because it is their dedication to that us and them dualism in the world that can help us bring unity to any situation. Because when we can be the unity that's missing, that's when we all get to say, oh yeah. Please remain standing and the band's gonna open us up with a song. <coughs> and I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I came upon a child of God. I want you to greet one another. Give me that one behind you. There's one behind you. A battery humor. <laughs> okay, it's dead. <laughs> Is it working? Maybe uh, you can hear me. Okay. Oh, the light's just off. I don't know. All right. All right. As long as you can hear me, that's the important part. All right. So a few things about us. Welcome to anybody who's visiting. Nah, I've seen all y'all before. Okay. <laughs> anybody visiting out there? Welcome. Uh, Jubilee Circle is an inclusive progressive interfaith community here in Columbia, South Carolina. We teach the timeless common wisdom of love and unity that you find in all mainstream religions, metaphysical philosophies, mysticism, and inspired secular and religious writers and teachers throughout the ages. We use popular music, teachings, weekly celebrations, educational and artistic events, other community building activities, because we're trying to create a space for everyone to experience transformation so then they can go out and be that transformation in the world. And we believe that we're here to expand our souls, to find a deeper meaning in life, 
renew our commitment to love and peace and justice, learn how to love wastefully, and undergo a transformation from the inside out that is so complete that more and more and more we are living into that higher divine self. But we also recognize we're part of God's good creation. We're made out of love and joy, of course, but we're also here in animated stardust. But we forget this. We, we arrive on the planet and we look around and we see you over there and me over here and then all the judging starts, all the grievances. We look and we see people over here and we go, oh, they're beautiful. Oh, they're ugly. Oh, they're good. They're bad. They're generous. They're stingy. They're loving. And those people are just recalcitrant. So, so recalcitrant. Intransigent. Intransigent. But let us remember, our true function here is to remember that we've never left our home. We are all still one in the mind of God. And that is our purpose here, is to wake up. And we do that by becoming channels of love in the world. So we can wake up and we awaken everyone as we awaken. And that is something that will make you say, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hear these wise and holy words. These wise and holy words, if my arm is long enough. <laughs> you need me to hold it back here? No, that's all right. <laughs> From Joel S. Goldsmith. There is an invisible wisdom governing our life. There is an invisible love enfolding us, providing, caring, protecting, and sustaining. It is through our own dedication. Let me say that again. It is through our own dedication and consecration that we bring about this. It will not happen to us out of the blue, although it has happened occasionally to a few persons who without even having a thought in their mind of a spiritual subject suddenly have had the experience such as this. But then because they knew nothing of its nature, very often they have lost it and have been unable to recapture it. That is not true for us because, you know, we're all here right now. We, we are seeking to remember the truth of who and whose we are and why we are here. That is not about us. We are disciplined in our practice because you are here. This is not true for you. We know that the divine presence, the Holy Ghost, has descended upon us. And we know that since this is true, we can return to it again and again to this quiet withinness, like Candace was talking about, and bring it back into conscious expression deliberate expression on purpose expression until eventually the day comes when it's no longer necessary and the christ is really living our life the ultimate is reached and then we become so established in this that there really is no little I to take care of. Something invisible is always doing the taking care of it in advance, making the crooked places straight, putting people in our path, divinely guarding, guiding, and protecting us is what he's talking about. And for one of my favorite books that we studied in practitioner studies is from Richard Moss, and it's called The Mandala of Being. Our ability to enter states of expansiveness and clear-mindedness and centeredness <coughs> is always a cumulative result of living more in the now. The reason people so quickly leave these higher consciousness, these higher states, is that without constant reinforcement of consciousness, consciousness work to refresh the mind's connection with the immediacy 
of the moment, the immediacy of the moment, conscious. I'm making a decision. That is our freedom. Because we're made in the image and likeness of the infinite. We have the freedom of choice. We have been given dominion <laughs> over our thoughts. We think that we are our thoughts. No, we are the observer of our thoughts. And as observers, we get to take our power back. It takes a little willingness and it takes practice. It's habit that causes us to move away from the present moment. We are what we habitually do, what we habitually think, and we continually take the bait. Nothing's going to change. And then finally, from, from Eckhart Tolle, and I say Tolle, some people say it's Tolle, I don't know, I'm from the <laughs> South, you know, I'm just lucky if I get Eckhart right. To the ego, the present moment hardly <laughs> exists. <laughs> That's the end of the ego in the present moment. Only past and future are considered important. This total reversal of the truth accounts for the fact that in the ego mode, the mind is so dysfunctional. It's always concerned with keeping the past alive because without it, who are you? It constantly projects itself into the future to ensure its, conti its continued survival and to seek some kind of release and fulfillment there. It says, one day, ha, when this happens, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be at peace. I can't wait till then. Every day I'm closer to then. Right? <sighs> it's not the present that it sees. It misperceives it completely because it looks through the eyes of the past. It reduces the present to a means to an end and always lies in the mind projected future. <coughs> Observe your mind. That's what we're going to invite us all to do today, observe our mind. That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Especially if you got the monkey mind. Ob <laughs> observe your mind, and you will see that this is how it works. The present moment, and I'm telling you this from direct experience, the present moment holds the key to liberation. The present moment holds the key to liberation. And so many people say, well, I can't meditate. Well, you know what I tell my kids? Can't, never could. So we, the invitation is take can't out of our vocabulary. The present moment holds the key to liberation, but you cannot find the present moment as long as you are your mind or you think you're your mind. We are the observer. These are wise and holy words, right? These are the holy words. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hallelujah, I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm really excited to get to share this song with you because I think I wrote it in with the band in, in 1998. It's hard to believe I've been doing this 30 years. So I, I'm so happy I get to do that. And I'm so happy that I get to, to play this with these incredibly talented musicians that have really been disciplined in their practice. <laughs> and so I'm excited to, to bring this to you. It's called Seize the Moment. I wrote it with my bass player, Tim Bramlett, uh, for my first album. And it talks about so many people wish their lives away. Searching for tomorrow, they lose today. And I'm afraid that they'll awake alone to find a trail of broken dreams and a love left behind. So we've got to learn to hold a hand and dry a tear to feel every moment that we've been given here. 
because all too soon the future is the past. Let's seize the moment like it was the last. And it's based on a true story of one of my middle school student boys, boy students, I should say, young man, whose parents kept telling him over and over, why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more this? Why can't you be more that? And all he wanted was a chance to start over. For someone to see him without a shadow of the past. And that's what we all want. That's what the Course teaches. And if you're, we're in the present moment, there is no past. There's no past you, there's no past me, there's no past us. It's just being and that's the invitation.
Yes, one more time. Let's hear it. Man, and I'd like to personally thank the Holy Spirit for helping me to hold on to my guitar. <laughs> it's very hard to be strapless in front of people. <laughs> I need direction. There you go. It might be a little hot. Okay. So I, I like to begin, to me, at the beginning, which is the present, to evoke the spirit of the living God that is closer than our breath, nearer than our hands of, and feet. You know, the course I was reading this week, and I love how, I love how and I hate how. <laughs> Hate's a strong word, but whenever I'm preaching, it seems like the things that come into my life experience are things that are very challenging that I have to learn, and it's perfect. And A Course in Miracles just follows me everywhere I go. <laughs> and this week, one of the things I was rereading was that the heart of God is in our heart. Whew. Closer than our breath, nearer than our hands and feet. So we're going to evoke that presence. And it's not begging and beseeching a God outside of ourselves. It is just speaking the truth of what is. And there's one truth spoken in many different ways. And the truth is, God is right where we are. And so we begin with gratitude. So much to be grateful for. I'm grateful that I got to wake up this morning. Grateful for another day, another day to, to be in service, another day to pray, to meditate, to be with my friends, with, with the mighty companions that are joining us on this journey, this holy assignment that we have been drawn to. I am grateful. I am grateful for the amount of work that this band put in this week to embody their gifts and, and infuse their gifts with the Spirit of God and to be disciplined in their practice and to really express unity consciousness as we played. I am grateful. I am grateful for everybody on, on the sound system, grateful for, for everybody that's handling the tech and for each and every person, each and every being that is in this place because we are not alone. There are ancestors around us. There are angels everywhere. And I am grateful. Whoo, grateful, grateful. Come go with me. We're talking today. And I recognize, recognize that God is all that there is, that there is no place or space where God is not. I, I can go nowhere that God is not. Whew, I have a silent partner that is not so silent sometimes that is always ising on our behalf. Infinite intelligence, divine wisdom God is. The only power that there is is God. Divine order is ising. Infinite possibilities God is. There are no limits on God. I am one I am one with this power, this presence. It knows itself as me, this unique expression. Lives, moves, and has its beingness. And as this is true for me, it's true for the each of us. From the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. God doesn't do do-overs. Each is a unique expression that the world has been waiting for, holding its breath, for us to take our place as unique expressions, one with God. One with God, one with each other, and one with all that is. And so it's from this place of absolute oneness 
that I get to bless our service today from beginning to end. It was blessed before we began. And I surrender myself as, as a vehicle, as an instrument for God to flow through, speak through. And I, I affirm that it is spoken in a language and a manner in which each and every person catches what they need for the day in a language which they absolutely understand. And so I bless our time. It's a holy encounter, a holy assignment that we have all said yes and oh yeah to. And I simply say, amen. I think church is over. <laughs> church was over for me. Church was over for me when I was reading, so, you know. So I, I, Richard Moss is, is amazing. Uh, it was so nice. And so if you want to delve into it, you know, I'm just scratching the surface today. But if you really want to dig deeper, check out, his, uh, Ross, I think it's probably um, moss.com, richardmoss.com. He offers so many free opportunities, free workshops and talks. And his book is really help me out it might it'll either tick you off <laughs> and or bring you peace so i would invite you to kind of lean into the ticked off part because that's what i had to do because you know i was still stuck in blaming people for my experience but it, the mandala of being is just a tool to be able to recognize where we are and we talked about awareness before candace has spoken about awareness before uh, we talk about the, the power of meditation, and we're going to continue to do that because I need reminding of the power of, the, of that practice. And so the things that I want to share with you around uh, the mandala being are awareness, self-awareness of where we are. Because if we're not in the present moment, then we're in the past, we're in the future. And I think they included a copy of the mandala in our notes. Or we're in the future... Or are we stuck in me stories? And our emotions help us figure out where we are. They are a gift. You know, I was taught to control your temper. Do not lose your temper. Uh, you know, handle your emotions. You don't, we, uh, crying is a sign of weakness. I'm a girl, but I was the oldest, so that was something I was brought up to do is not express. We had to keep our game plan so close we couldn't let the cat out of the bag until the very last moment because we had to make our way of escape growing up. So that's how I learned to keep these stories in my head to myself and then go. So we want to, our emotions are not the problem. We want to Stop labeling things as good and bad experiences. We want to be able to surrender to whatever's happening in the present moment. And the only way to surrender is to let go of our attachment as to what the future should be, what the past was, and what's going on in the life of another. And then all of our little me stories, me, myself, and I. Pool of me, that's what it is. And to be able to forgive. The peace of God is all I want. And I cannot be at peace if I'm blaming, accusing. And it's just like the, the lesson for today, only my condemnation, my judgment injures me so once i can recognize those things then i'll be able to trust that no matter what is happening it is for me that even in the midst of great sorrow great great emotional pain and anguish Something is seeking to be released. Something is seeking to be healed. Something is seeking to be birthed. And, and, and you ladies that have had children, God bless you. 
And if you had a 10-pound baby, whoo, I bow before you. Lord, it's messy. It hurts. And something wonderful, something new, something fresh is birthed because of that experience. So we have to trust that no matter what's going on in this physical realm, there is, a, a, there is order to it. That God is truly for us, never against us. And we, you know, we have these little narrow-minded thoughts about how things could go. Well, I think this. Well, if I put myself in the perspective of the infinite, it's inf infinite. That means that you can't number it the possibilities that are available for us. That ways are being made out of seeming no way. We get to trust that. But first, we have to recognize where we are. And I don't mean you need to show you behind when you're feeling these emotions. You know, I love to stomp in a circle when I'm angry. Sometimes, I'll tell you the truth, I yell and scream in my house. It used to be Georgia, but now little Leo's getting an earful. And it's not a bad thing. Anger is not a bad thing. It's an emotion. Emotions are not our enemy. What happens is if we allow those emotions to control our decisions and we react rather than respond. So sometimes we have to bracket. Bracket doesn't mean you push it down and pretend it's not there. Because what we push down in the body temple and don't look at manifests as dis-ease. So we take time for ourselves. We need to love ourselves first. And how we love ourselves first is by being aware of our feelings. And if I'm not at peace, I am not in the present moment. I want everybody to just stop right now and just focus on your breath and just breathe. Just follow your breath. If I am in the present moment, I am at peace. I will be still a moment and go home. So when we have these emotions come up and trigger us, we should say thank you. Because they're showing us, hey, yay, we get to dig this up. And once we dig it up and we bring it to the light, it, it automatically starts to lose its power over us. And then we can respond rather than react. And react means you do the same thing you always done. And, and that's a definition, a definition of insanity, to do what you've always done and expect a different result. But now we have the opportunity to recognize it. And this is how you recognize past thoughts. Past thoughts, we all caught up in rest and, and, and caught up in regret. Oh, Lord, I wish I hadn't done that. Or nostalgia, that those were the good old days back then. Yes. Or we feel guilty. That means we're caught up in the past. And I remember hearing an interview with Adele, and they were talking about her music and about, you know, the past and how she could be so comfortable with it. And she said that it was, it was, it was just life, that the past is never as, as good as we thought it was. Because remember, we have selective memory based on our experiences, right, and our perceptions. Never as good, never as bad as we thought it was. It's just life. So if we catch ourselves in regret, in guilt, nostalgia, ah, <laughs> I'm not at peace because I wish I should have, could have. So I notice that I've moved over into the past. So as soon as I recognize it, I can take a breath and move myself back into being. And then if I'm caught up on this other person, you, it, it, you know, I'm just angry all this traffic is because Trump is in town. How much money are they spending on this thing? Good God Almighty, I'm 
trying to get to Navy, Old Navy. And you're turning me around. Caught up in these you, you stories. Oh, you did this, or you caused this. I'm into you. You got to get back to me, boo, right there to the present moment. In the future, I'm hoping... I got anxiety about it. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to lose if I do this. I don't know if I'm going to be okay. I'm afraid, and I get caught up in future stories. What if this happens or that happens? And, you know, being a Virgo, we analyze everything. You look at all the possible scenarios, and then, you know, it's just the brain that I, I, I used to live in and try to stay out of now. And then when I get caught up in myself, you know, I can get all grandiose. Yes, I am Batman. <laughs> I am here to keep you safe. That is my job. You know, and I, you know, impressive, you know. You know, I just try to, hey, how you doing? That's me. Or I can move myself into depression. Get caught up in sadness, hopelessness. So the mandala of being gives us a tool that we can make a decision from. Now, you can stay there. You can stay in the past if we want to stay in the past. We can, we can start thinking about the future all the time, but, but I invite you to spend as much time in the present moments and whatever you're doing. Because I'm telling you, it'll give you a buzz. Unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life, not that I've experienced anything, <laughs> but th to be in the moment, to be in the now, because when we're in the now, we're tuned in, tapped into the infinite. We are not alone. So stop labeling things. The invitation is stop labeling things as good or bad. I remember Oprah Winfrey telling the story about Maya Angelou. She was upset. She had a party at her house. And she was ran into the bathroom to call Dr. Maya Angelou. Wouldn't you love to have her on speed dial? <laughs> I would. Oh, God. And so Oprah was telling her, well, you know, no, 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 this person said this, they're doing this, they're going to go, they're, they're just not treating me right. And Dr. Maya Angelou said, stop it. Stop it right now and say thank you. But you don't understand what they just said. You don't understand what they're doing. I stop it. And I'm telling you right now, if Maya Angelou told me to stop it, it'd be like, Yes, yes, ma'am. Stop and say thank you. Because when people or things move out of our life, rejection is just a sign of a new direction. And it doesn't mean you're, you're, you're walking away from a person or a situation. It's just we're, we're invited to see it differently. I'm willing to see this situation through the eyes of spirit, spirit's purpose in, through, and as our life, to together our life as individuals, our life as a community. Thank you. Because what God has in store for me other people are going to long for, is what Maya said. Now, that's not about comparing, because everybody gets there when they get there. But if I'm awake, I get to choose. That's our freedom. And so, when, and Reverend Michael was talking about this today in his inner vision, that we need to be able to enjoy the experience of being without putting labels on everything. When we drop labeling ourselves, others, and situations, we can be open to the pure isness, the pure isness of each moment. Pure isness does not label. So the question is. 
Can we be still long enough, be in the presence long enough until the mud starts to settle at the bottom? All these, all these thoughts of wish I should have, could have, you should have, uh, or life was much better, or, or you know, what, you don't know what she said to me. But as we, we become still, we allow this, this murky water of our consciousness of the thoughts that are bombarding us so that we can make a decision because that's what dominion is about. It's a decision. It's a moment-by-moment moment decision. And that is our freedom. That is our birthright. And all it takes is a little willingness. But you know, when life is like this, you can't see nothing. And I have learned to, to not move until I am moved upon because the, the old Deborah Ann Vaughn, as my mother would call me when she was upset with me, was impulsive. <clears throat> it was more like, oh, I got to go. And so I, what I ended up with, and, and again, I bless Sally Turner because she has been a blessing in my life, was I would have obsessive regrets because I left too soon. That every relationship is perfect for our growth and our expansion. So we have to be willing to sit and you we have to do what's right for ourselves sometimes it takes me three days sometimes it takes a little longer but the key is we get to start over every moment even if we mess up even if we react because i'm gonna tell you right now i was not nice at Publix the other day i was not in the mood for somebody telling me somebody was supposed to be in front of me i had already started putting my stuff on there and i just turned and kept putting my stuff on and that was not me And so as soon as I recognize it, I start praying and blessing th the situation. So we get to start over every time. We get to begin again. We don't beat it. The ego wants us to say, look, you really suck at this. Who are you to talk about being in the now? You showed your behind in Publix. <laughs> and it really wasn't that loud, but it was loud in my head. You know, so we have, and when we meditate, it helps us recognize that voice of the ego as opposed to the voice of spirit, which is the whisper until sometimes, like me, I need a sledgehammer. I got a hard head. My mama said when I was a little girl, I'd get upset, and I would beat my head on the floor. Boom, 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 when I didn't get my way. I think that's what my problem is. <laughs> but I'm hard-headed, and a hard head makes a soft behind. And we have to forgive people. Forgive people is, is, is a practice. Forgive, and I'm going to be at peace. And, and all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. We talked about that. And beginning again. So the invitation is to, to, to recognize where you are when you're not in the now. If you're, if you're in the in the past you know oh, life was magnificent no it wasn't what's before me is always better than what lies behind me it's never as good or bad as we thought it was the future i place the future in the hands of god man if we could just take that lesson from a course of miracles and live in it when we're thinking about other people Everybody's doing the best they can. It's not about us. Don't take it personal. Stop it. Say thank you, as Maya Angelou said. And you know what? I, I try not to be full of myself. And to bring myself to the present moment and say I'm willing to see this differently. Willingness is all it takes. I'm willing to, if, if this is what I have to be at peace, to fulfill my purpose, I'm willing to see it your way, Spirit. 
as Reverend Michael talks about, and Candace has mentioned it before, this or something better, but it's always for me and not against me. Stop labeling things as good or bad. Everything is for us, not against us. Cancer was not bad for me. It's an opportunity to wake up to the truth of who I am and the power and the presence of the living God that is closer than my breath. To be able to bear witness to that truth. That's what we all get to do in our own lives as individual expressions. Be you. Your work is your ministry. Your family is your ministry. Your children is your ministry. Every person you encounter is a holy encounter. Surrender to whatever is happening in our experience. And I say help. I said help so many times this week I thought I was I am Van Van. Help. Help me now. I don't want to be the judge anymore. I'm willing. And then finally, trust. Trust in a power and a presence that is never in absence. I lean into principle. And principle is the absolute truth spoken in many different ways. That this power and presence is always for me and never against me. Always ising on our behalf. And awareness and dominion, if you so choose to take this mission at this time in life, it is not for the faint at heart, but I promise you, if you're disciplined in your practice, just like musicians, the Spirit is going to show up, show out as you. And the world is going to be a much better place because you chose to come here and be this expression of the infinite. And for that, we say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm just a disembodied voice. <laughs> just rolling around. When I was in television, uh, the, the weather guy, you, you might, uh, might relate to this, John. The weather guy <laughs> forgot to turn his microphone off. You know, everybody's wireless microphones. And he went to the bathroom. Yeah, that went out on the air. <laughs> The guy, the soundboard guy was like, oh my God, <laughs> kill that channel. Breathe deeply. So Deb mentioned two of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles. One, I place my future in the hands of God. And I've told people before, that is the, if I can't go to sleep at night, that's my mantra. I just lay there, I place my future in the hands of God. And then eventually it's, I place my, wait a minute, what's the next? Because I'm falling asleep, right? I forget the sentence, but I place my future in the hands of God. And the other one is, I'm willing to see things differently. And those are the two, I mean, if I could learn both of those lessons so well, I would just drop this body and ascend to God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but we want to be, as the, as the country song goes, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go right now. <laughs> but I will tell you that the good news is you can go to heaven right now without dropping your body if you're willing to see things differently and you truly place your future in the hands of God. So as we meditate, in this moment, I invite you to breathe deeply. I come into this present moment. Often when I meditate and my, the monkey mind starts and my mind starts to wander, the mantra I use is just now. 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 it just keeps me here. I 
think about the past. I'm not thinking about the future. It's all now. 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 Whatever's in the past isn't here anymore. Whatever is in the future has not yet arrived. You cannot worry your way out of it. All you have is right now. Place your future in the hands of God. Place the past there too, because it ain't coming back. And just be here now. Breathe deeply. If there's one topic that will put you immediately in the past or in the future, it is money. Because you think to yourself about in the past how you didn't have any and how in the future how you're going to get more. But when somebody asks you in the present moment, it's an opportunity for you to reflect on how the resources you have needed found their way to you, sometimes in miraculous ways. Didn't have what I needed, and then suddenly I did. Just came out of the woodwork, out of places that I wouldn't even think. And so the present moment remind you. Your past is gone. Future's not here yet. In this moment, in this moment, the resources you have are plenty and often plentiful. And if you want more in the future, <laughs> give more now. Because what you don't have is what you're not given. And you can tell, I mean, you know, there's lots of people who will stand up and have tithing conversations and say, you know, I didn't have nothing, and I gave everything I had, and it came back a millionfold. And that's what happens. Because if you are missing something, that's what you're not given. And if you're looking at that bank account going, oh, I don't know. Yeah, you can pass it around, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> And we've got the basket going around in here. Some of you are already on your phones because you already see that QR code. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're out there watching on the YouTube, uh, there is a, a QR code um, in it. Probably, mm, we got to put one in that bulletin. I don't know if there's one in that bulletin or not. Anyway, <laughs> if there isn't, we can put that there, but not. You can go to jubileecircle.com, and there is a donate button right there on the front page. And you can do that, and you can give. Uh, electronically through uh, Venmo and PayPal, or you can write a good old-fashioned check and address it to Jubilee Circle at P.O. Box 4611, Columbia, South Carolina, 29240.
All right, so we're going to say goodbye to the folks on the YouTube. Remember, uh, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. That is from Meister Eckhart, and because saying thank you puts you right in that present moment. Makes you stop it and say thank you. And so, thank you. so I invite you, say, say thank you a lot this week. Thank you. <laughs> and say, oh, yeah, we'll see you.